Well, thank you very much um, to all of you for being here today. I'm excited to be able to present uh, once again in this room. This is my second time presenting to the, uh, the union. Um, well, the following proposition stands before us this evening. Society must prescribe a modern gentleman. As the participant here who is taking the affirmative position on this resolution, uh, it is incumbent upon me to demonstrate two things in order to prove this thesis. First, I must show that there is indeed a problem in society that is uniquely affecting men. Second, it must be shown that the role of the gentleman is an answer to these particular problems. So what is wrong with men today? Now, there are two aspects of the crisis that the contemporary man in the West faces that I want to focus on here. First, there are clear indications of this male crisis in sociological and psychological literature. Second, the continued societal moves toward inner authenticity and away from traditional social custom and roles has not only failed to resolve these issues, but has at least in part caused them. In his 2022 book, Of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling, Why it Matters and What to Do About It, Brookings Institute fellow Richard Reeves outlines some clear indicators that there is indeed a crisis that is facing men in the modern West. I will overview just three of those areas here, though there are many more. Those are education, work, and mental health. As Reeves demonstrates, boys and men are falling behind in education from the earliest years through postgraduate schooling. In the United States, for every 100 bachelor's degrees being awarded to women, only 74 are being awarded to men. This disparity between men and women increases in the graduate level with three out of five master's degrees being awarded to women. Similarly, three out of five associate's degrees are awarded to women. This lack of success in education for men is also demonstrated in college dropout rates. When dividing students by categories of race, sex, income, place of birth, in other words, immigrant status, there is no category that has a higher dropout rate than that of men across the board. Along with this statistical underperformance of men in the reception of degrees, there is also evidence that women are generally outperforming men in a number of areas within educational institutions. Reeves mentions just as one example of this, that in 2020, the review at every one of the top 16 law schools had a woman as editor-in-chief. Now, these disparities in education are not simply due to men performing more labor-intensive jobs that do not require <laughs> higher education. One in three men that only has a high school degree is not in the labor force at all. And the most likely group of those who are not in the labor force, the unemployed, are men between the ages of 25 and 34. Many traditional labor jobs have either been automated or are delegated to factories overseas. These problems in education and consequently the labor force are part of a broader trend toward despair and hopelessness in males. This is evident in that nearly three out of four deaths of despair, uh, which refers to those deaths that are caused by either suicide or drug overdose, are committed by men. Much of this is due to persistent loneliness. As in 2021, 15% of males said that they have no close friends. That is an increase from only 3% in 1990. And that trajectory continues on that path. Marital relationships in our society, which previously gave stability to men in many ways, both psychologically and socially, are most often dissolved on the initiative of the woman. According to a commonly cited study presented to the American Sociological Association in 2015, since 69% of divorces are initiated by women. Among college-educated women, that number has increased to now almost 90%. Further, divorced men have far worse life outcomes than divorced women, having a significant increase in heart issues, in substance abuse, 
and in younger death, all following a divorce. Men have lost their traditional place in society, in the family, in the workforce, and in education. Further, they are without those close social bonds outside of the family, as traditional institutions have continued to erode in their societal significance. Churches, synagogues, social clubs, in-person workplaces at all. When looking at education or work or media, it seems that women can do everything that men have traditionally done, but better. And if there are any places in which males are differentiated from women, that is often described only in negative ways, as male aggression is referred to often as toxic. Without a positive vision of manhood to counteract this, men will only slide further into despair, or, on the other hand, they will embrace the toxic lifestyle that has already been attributed to them anyway, hence the rise of the Andrew Tates. While some may praise this move away from traditional gender roles as liberating, this move toward authentic living in accord with one's internal desires and self-chosen identities has not demonstrably increased happiness or well-being for men. There is a clear correlation between the move away from traditional norms and an increase in anxiety, depression, and loneliness. While correlation in data does not always equal causation, in this case, a strong argument can be made that these two realities are deeply connected. Now, the proposal here that I'm giving for a modern gentleman necessitates that there is some kind of difference between men and women, to which the gentleman is a concept that is uniquely attributable to men. Now, with all of the necessary qualifications in mind that you have to give with something like this, such as that these differences that we're talking about are general, they don't apply to every single man, they don't apply to every single woman in the same way or to the same degree. Uh, with all of that in mind, I will present some of these differences. In Scott Barry Kaufman's article, Taking Sex Differences in Personality Seriously, published in the Scientific American in 2019, the author identifies three male traits which most consistently differentiate male from female brains. Risk-taking, a higher sex drive, and increased aggression. Along with these three masculine tendencies, some other traits that are higher in males include assertiveness, justice-mindedness, and introversion. Men also have lower levels of empathy, agreeableness, and extroversion. Further, and related to our present topic, men are more ambitious, and to be careful, I want to be careful because that's in some sense, depending on what you mean by that. But this is demonstrated in a 2016 survey uh, that was done at the Harvard Business School, where students were given an image of a ladder with rungs that numbered one through 10, and these students were asked to identify which of those rungs on the ladder was their ideal position. And consistently, men identified the highest rungs on the ladder and women the lower. Men have a drive and a desire to be ahead of others. Uh, Harvard professor Harvey Mansfield summarizes the, the literature on this male dynamic in his book, Manliness, saying this, men are very concerned with hierarchy. They want to rebel against it, show their independence of it, climb to the top of it, or establish an equality within it. Women are more democratic, or more effortlessly democratic, because they do not begin from the desire to contest. Now, we have to answer the question, what is the gentleman, as a response to this? It is this inner desire for domination, contest, and ambition that men need to direct in a proper way. If there is not a virtuous route to which this drive is to be oriented, it will, without any boundaries, lead either toward a retreat into a fantasy world in which those inclinations can be exercised freely through video games, or to an unrestrained Nietzschean grasp for power. It is the latter which has led to the rise of Andrew Tate and the red-pilled types that are popular on social media today, where ambition is directed at sex and financial gain. 
The masculine drive cannot simply be suppressed, nor should it be, but it can be rightly directed. And I propose that it is the ideal of the gentleman that both provides men a model to emulate and directs their ambition toward that which is good for both themselves and broader society. The concept of the gentleman to which I refer is that proposed by 19th century American author James Fenimore Cooper. Cooper recognized that without an aristocratic class, the United States was in danger of losing the inherited repository of high culture, which forms the people and ideals <coughs> of this country. And without a class of men, he does refer to ladies here as well, that's just not the topic of discussion, that intentionally promote truth, goodness, and beauty, such things would inevitably be replaced with a culture of mere consumption, in which financial achievements are prized above all else. For Cooper, the gentleman is one who is adept in manners, is well educated, has a sense of refinement in his tastes, and strives toward a life of virtue. Such attainments are not achieved merely for the purpose of outwardly expressing some purely internal good, but these things are done for the good of broader society. Rather than a mere collection of isolated, atomized selves, a culture includes rituals, values, religion, arts. Within culture, there are a variety of necessary roles. Some need to engage in labor, others in religious vocations, others in scientific examination. However, not all of these roles need to be or should be directly engaged with the production of material goods. It is the artistic, philosophical, and religious inheritance of a culture which identifies it as uniquely human rather than a mere machine making material whether physical or digital, to be bought and sold. Therefore, the role of the gentleman is an absolute necessity in society. What are the duties of the gentleman? First, the gentleman engages in the inherited social ritual of the West that is usually placed under the title etiquette. The gentleman understands that there are things that are proper and others that are not. It is good for a society to have shame surrounding certain behaviors, as this serves as a curb to restrain citizens from that which is harmful to others in broader society. Further, ritualized behaviors of conduct reduce anxiety regarding what to do in a given social situation. When you learn the basic rules of social interaction, one needs only to follow those rules to have a productive conversation. It is these standards of behavior that then direct the masculine drive so that those urges that men have are directed at the good. Second, the gentleman engages in lifelong learning. Though this does not have to be exclusively within the humanities, it must to some significant degree be in the humanities. The gentleman receives and enjoys the literature the arts, the music which he has inherited with appreciation rather than disdain or resentment toward them and toward the past. He recognizes that great wisdom has formed the creation, the reception, and the preservation of the Western canon. Now, this does not mean, of course, that older works are not worthy of some critique, but that a posture of resentment does not drive one's reception of the past. These things are not to be kept to oneself, but they are to be shared with others. And third and finally, the gentleman is dedicated to the preservation of the rituals, traditions, organizations, and institutions within his own local context. This may mean joining the board for the local opera company, taking leadership position in a local congregation, or uh, helping to found some, some group for other men to be involved in in his town. Such things provide sources of purposive action for men in places of community, which is significantly lacking. They orient the manly ambition toward protection and betterment of a culture in which he lives and provide needed social connectivity, which men desperately lack. Uh, men are in crisis. They are failing in education, social connectivity, purpose, and mental health. 
The call for a modern gentleman provides dignity to men, gives them direction and purpose, calls them to virtuous action and communal involvement, provides community, gives them something good to strive for so that the masculine ambition may function in healthy limits, and provides the clear social direction that is desperately needed. Thank you.